Hello Dan here, 19th of March. Welcome to my allotment in Essex, UK. So, we'll be doing a bit of planting out today, some pea plants here, and we're also going to be doing some picking, covering the hungry gap. So I hope you enjoy the video, and if you like my work, please feel free to like the video, share it with anyone you think may find it interesting and for helpful, and if you'd like to be notified of when I put up any further videos, please feel free to subscribe. So I've got a very simple setup here in order to grow peas. So I have 22 plants here of pea variety Champion of England, which is a tall climbing pea. Here I have 12 plants of Meteor, and over here I have four plants of Jesse, which is a sugar snap pea. So 36 plants in total. There's about five meters worth of support here, which is about 16 feet, just over something like that. So I've got the plants planted about five inches, 13 or so centimeters apart. Down here, some are a bit closer together because it wasn't an exact calculation, but that's perfectly okay. So you can see I've got them protected here by using this netting here. Can't afford birds or anything to get these. It really would be frustrating indeed. This fleece here is having the same effect, just keeping the birds off really. I've got it weighted down by using bricks. So peas are like a well-draining but fertile soil. The growing medium on this part of the allotment, it largely consists of horse manure, or it was at the time, and also some compost that I've brought down here. I really made sure I put a lot of effort into building the soil here, and it now doesn't really look like horse manure or compost that's bought. It looks like compost you'd find out of a well-made home compost bin, so I'm very happy with that. That's what it looks like now. You can see some worm activity there, and the plants will absolutely adore this. Really is worth building good growing mediums, good soil, etc. Down here I've got some perpetual spinach. It's not true spinach. This is perpetual spinach, which is more of a chard, but it's what's generally recommended for overwintering as opposed to, say, true spinach. Chard is said to be more resilient, maybe a bit more hardy, although true spinach can be said to be maybe a bit more tender and a bit sweeter. Some of you may remember I'm growing some of that at home, so I'll be having some of that to show you soon, hopefully. But anyway, this is perpetual spinach, and we're going to have a load of these. And you can see just how much veg I've got here. We're having an early summer here, and um, well, it's not early summer really, early spring I should say. And really, the weather's been absolutely fantastic. What's the weather like where you are? Let me know, because uh, it can be very interesting, because I know some people follow me from other parts of the world, other parts of the country, where it's still relatively cold. You might even still be under snow there. So uh, just let me know. And uh, we're just going to be having a little bit of a harvest. I mean, these leaves, they're really lovely. Got them covered. I would wager that uh, at this stage, these will be okay from birds, etc. But um, I don't want to, to risk this lovely crop here. And the leaves just look so beautiful. And the stems are really nice. This one, these ones here are really nice plants. And this early spring, it's just helped so much. Doesn't mean it's gonna last, mind you, but uh, certainly given everything a nice start. And we've also had a fair bit of rain as well, actually. Of course, those two combined, warmish weather and plenty of rain have uh, contributed to some really beautiful growth. So all this area was from uh, mid-late summer planting last year and uh, really is valuable. This here is golden chard. I really like this. It hasn't come into growth as quick as the spinach, but that's fine. These lovely tender leaves and they've got these absolutely gorgeous stems on them. And these are really nice steamed. I'm not much of a cook, I'm really not. But um, nice steamed, nice boiled even, really. Very nutritious as well. So yeah, that's uh, golden chard. So down here I have some white albino beetroot and I really adore these and I found it retains its sweetness far longer than say purple beetroot. And I planted these initially last year on the 11th of March. So over a year ago in cell trays and germinated them and then planted them out here. Found a tag here, which I presume will be for these 
certainly will be very close to these on the 18th of April. So it's probably about right. In fact, that would be so planted and then planted out about five or so weeks later. So I'll let you have a look at them. We'll harvest them and beetroot, you can eat the tops as well. And very nutritious and very tasty indeed. Let's harvest some of these. So these are smaller than many of the beetroots I harvested last year because I module sow them and then I pick them as they grow, leaving the other ones in to then grow at a later time in the growing season. And it's a nice one. That one there, lovely. We're going to have all of these, have all of these out. Going to cook them up probably tonight. Very nice. Another one there, look. Another one there. Oh, got one here. The top's been shredded because it wasn't covered up, but uh, there we are. One more there and very healthy. So here I have a lovely harvest of white albino beetroot. Really nice, some nice size roots there actually. A little bit of damage on this one, but uh, that's fine. One would expect that uh, considering how long these have been in the ground, but one damaged out of probably over 10 roots is, is good really. And I'm uh, really looking forward to boiling these up. So hopefully you can see some close-ups of just how nice these look and uh, white albino beetroot I can thoroughly recommend that uh, people grow these and uh, I hope you're as happy with them as I am well down here got some broad beans variety aquadulture claudia hardy broad bean down to about minus 10 degrees C and planted these out here I believe on the 21st of October last year but you can see they've made some nice growth there got little flowers on they're looking very good now this one here this was a lovely find and this is red mizuna that's simply what it's called red mizuna and it's got really beautiful lovely peppery leaves these are really nice in a salad so you put this in with a bit of lettuce etc few tomatoes that would be absolutely wonderful they really do need to be covered up though okay because some of the ones here that have grown through the netting the birds have had the top so you've got to be very careful and here I've got some winter gem veil and lettuce and um, during them storms we had the wind blew the net off and the birds jumped in and uh, took the tops out of some of them but uh, once again that's just one of those things but uh, yeah really is looking promising and this uh, early spring is really really bringing things along down here